G'day guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing a um, having a fantastic Friday afternoon. Today this is going to be my video response for Dyslexic Nick's 400 plus subs contest. 400 subs, that's an absolute shitload, so congratulations mate, that is a hell of a lot and you're going to get a hell of a lot more. So um, congratulations and you deserve all the success because your channel's awesome and you're also a very talented filmmaker, so that gives you some added sort of incentive to uh, subscribe to this guy's channel. Link in the description below, like usual. Please sub to him if you haven't done so already. He needs more than 400 subs. Now, the competition, I'm going to show off my super low budget stuff. Now, I know you're interested, Nick, in the very low budget sort of filmmaking. So, I've got a stack here that should interest you. Well, hopefully, it does. So, we're going to start off with a very, very, very low budget Swedish horror film called Death Academy. I haven't made a, a cover for this yet. Death Academy, not the greatest film. It has some pretty good practical gore effects. So for the budget that it had, it was an okay movie, but it was horrible acting, and the story just didn't go anywhere. But the practical gore, gore effects were very, very good, and for anybody who is getting into film, this is a pretty good um, template to go off. You've got this Canadian film called Scarce. I'm not really a fan of this one, but it is very low budget, and once again, it's got very good gore scenes. So, low budget um, fans will get a lot out of this one. Personally, I just couldn't get past the acting. That's my biggest problem with low budget stuff, the acting. But the practical gore effects in this one, once again, very, very good. Now, this movie is low budget, but it didn't have any problem with the acting, so I thought the acting was excellent, and the effects were excellent, the story was excellent, and overall, a very, very good low budget UK horror film, Mum and Dad. Very, very perverted, very nasty, good gore, and it was made on a limited sort of budget, but it was very, very well done for the money that they had. So definitely one to check out for a low-budget horror film. Now we get to the Australian goodies. I love my Australian low-budget. I love Australian uh, cinema in general. The first one is a crocodile movie called Black Water. Now this one has a very low budget compared to the much bigger budget of Rogue. Personally, I think this one is a lot better than Rogue. It's from the same director who directed a very recent film called The Reef. So if you like The Reef, I actually felt that this one was better than The Reef. I like The Reef, but yeah, this one had more tension in it. Much more realistic than Rogue, and I thought overall it was a much better film because it didn't have any fancy effects to show off and you know, it didn't glorify anything. It's just a down, um, downright dirty, realistic horror film with a lot of tension. And that's what is good about low budget filmmaking. They don't have the money to uh, overdo all the special effects, so you get a very real sort of feel to these sort of movies. But this one is a very, very good low budget Australian horror film. If you like your creature feature films, definitely one to have. Now this one is, I know how many runs you scored last summer. This is a spin-off, I know what you did last summer, Australian low budget horror comedy. Really wasn't that funny, but once again, the gore effects were pretty good. So. I would recommend it for, once again, low-budget film fans, but as far as I'm concerned, I just didn't think it was that funny. I was a bit surprised and disappointed by the end result, but, yeah, it did have its moments, but, yeah, once again, it just fell victim to um, being solid, but nothing really special. That was a bit of a letdown, that one. Now, these two films that I'm going to finish off with are very, very good low-budget films. The first one is The Horseman. Extremely powerful, extremely disturbing, and very, very brutal. Uh, Australian low-budget cinema at its best. I love this film. It had a lot of emotional impact, plus it had the brutality to keep gorehounds really um, happy. And uh, overall, just a very, very well-made, low-budget Australian film that everybody should see. I don't know how... The marketing was for this film worldwide, but I don't, it didn't get a very good release here in Australia, which is a shame because this one is a very good one, and the director, Stephen Catrucius, has a big future ahead of him because to make a film like this with a limited budget took a lot of skill. So I highly recommend this one if you're into the more extreme sort of cinema. Now, the last one, I have a lot of low-budget horror films, but these ones, are, I think, are the most sort of low-budget and ones that deserve attention. This one is the most underrated film I think I've seen in years, and that is No Through Road. Very, very low-budget. The acting is a little bit dodgy here and there, but overall, a highly enjoyable film, really good suspense, and once again, very brutal, very graphic. Well, not overly graphic, but the violence hits you hard, just like The Horseman. When the violence happens, it's very realistic, and that's what Australian 
cinema, in horror in particular, is known for. Our style is very realistic, brutal, very um, horrible sort of violence instead of glorifying it as something cool. So it shows violence for what it is, that's horrible, and this film, once again, the violence in it is horrible. The acting, as I said, not the best. The script is not the best, but for it to get a 3.5 out of 10 on IMDb is a massive sort of injustice. It does not do the film justice at all. It's much better than that. And once again, Australian independent, low-budget filmmaking at its best. So a very, very good horror movie, and I would highly recommend it to you. All right, guys, that's it for this. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Once, Like I said before, I've got a lot of low-budget horror films, but I just wanted to pick out a few just to show off and to uh, put an entry into Dyslexic Nick, a.k.a. Nick's contest. So thanks again, mate, for running it. You've got some pretty good prizes on offer, so hopefully I can win it, but that's not the reason why I enter. I just think it's really fun to enter these kind of competitions. So congratulations once again on your subs. Um, hopefully this competition entry is good enough to be in the running for a prize. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.